Yeah. Hi, Jeff. It's so nice to speak to you. Uh, it's really late here in Berlin. It's in the midst of the day in LA. Today it was a rather devastating day for us all because somewhere in the middle of the night for your time, you got the news that Nasrin is going to be re-imprisoned. Maybe for all of us who don't know the story, you can walk us a little bit through the different steps that we do gain a better understanding what that means. Yes, first let me thank you for showing the film Nazarene and for this discussion and for everyone's concern about human rights. Uh, one of the messages from Nazarene's life and that, that we believe in strongly is that uh, human rights have to be and are universal. You know, they don't stop at a border and you don't just target a country you don't like. You have to look at your own country too. We all have to rise together. Uh, and so I really appreciate this, this opportunity. Um, yeah, um, we, my, my wife, who's also the producer of, uh, of Nazarene, Marsha Ross, and I just had um, almost a 90 minute conversation yesterday with Nazarene and Reza. Uh, they're always so remarkable. You know, they, they always, no matter how serious things are, how difficult things are, what the threats are, there's always these moments to laugh and to joke and to have a human connection. Uh, and you just see her humanity that way. You know, she's not someone who uh, is like uh, a marble figure and great in public and horrible in private. Uh, that warmth that you see is, is the real thing and with her husband as well. And so yesterday when we were talking to them uh, and you know, she was saying, I'm sorry, I'm still coughing. You know, she still has the effects of COVID. Um, she said that they had met with a medical team and they were told that um, she would have a two week extension on her medical leave. As folks may know, uh, she, in August, she started a 46 day hunger strike uh, calling for all political prisoners to be released from Iranian prisons, especially with the threat of COVID, that they should be home with their family and safe. Um, after 46 days, uh, she did stop. Uh, her high health was uh, in terrible shape and uh, she was in even prison at that time. After uh, the barest amount of treatment, basically no treatment at all, um, one day she was told by the authorities of the in prison, um, hey, we're going to take you to the hospital so you can get some treatment. They put her in a car and rather than take her to the hospital, they drove her to Garshak prison, which has the reputation of being one of the most unsanitary, dangerous prisons in the world. And several newspapers have called it the worst place for women in Iran. Um, a few weeks later, she was given a medical leave because of her heart condition, but when she went to the doctor, she found out she had COVID and she'd infected her whole family. Uh, it's clear that she got COVID at Garchak prison. So um, that's where her health was. She was trying to recover. And uh, this morning at four o'clock in the morning, I got some texts and I shared them with you that um, the authorities have canceled that medical leave and they're sending her back to Garchak prison where she got sick in the first place. So <clears throat> just as an emotional re response to that, basically they are sending her back to a death trap because with COVID, a heart condition and, and the worst prison there is, uh, there is basically no, no chance that she could recover. Could you probably tell us a bit more? I mean, we do, do see that in the film, but Nasrin for me is one of the human rights lawyers, as you mentioned at the beginning, who really stands up uh, for freedom. And if I remember right, she was in prison this time because she was in prison before, because she, she stood up for the women who were really brave in taking up of her their head scars. And I mean, we have all seen that in Europe and in the US and we all applauded for that. But I don't think we were really emotionally realizing what that means for the women mm -hmm. and in the context of Iran, just showing your hair. Yeah. Um, let me just say that when she was arrested this time in June 2018, in the middle of our filming with her, not related to the film, but it was, you know, we had just spoken to her like two days before and, you know, um, 
there were a number of reasons and they weren't all declared initially by the authorities but one of the other reasons she was arrested was because the uh, judiciary had decided that there was only going to be like a small list of maybe 20 uh, lawyers that would be available for human rights uh, cases and all those lawyers would have to be approved by the government so you're talking about being arrested for for uh, human rights action and you have to work with a government approved lawyer um, that's just outrageous and that's the stacks the deck before it even starts and so one of the things she was also protesting was that um, but basically what they're trying to do is silence the most effective and articulate uh, and globally respected human rights activist in Iran uh, so um, but she's found a way not to be silenced she keeps finding a way not to be silenced <clears throat> And you're right, the, the women that she was representing are these incredible women. They're not famous like Nazreen. Uh, you, you see videos of someone who, by the way, is consciously being videoed. An old woman who walks to the middle of the street and stands on a planter, uh, maybe 70, 80 years old. Think of the oppression and the life that she's gone through. Uh, knowing that just by taking your hijab off in public, uh, she can go to prison for 10 years. Uh, that's the kind of people that Nazreen was representing. These are amazing women who all deserve our respect. So what was striking for me today was she she published a little note on Facebook that you also shared with us and also translated for us, which was really nice because what was striking for me is that in this note she gave where she said she's going to be re-imprisoned, she also used the opportunity to shed light on another case and say like, we need to stand up for someone else besides me. And in that case, I was wondering, yes, we all have to stand up for her release, but as you know her rather well, what could we do to also fulfill her wish to free all political prisoners? What is what we outsiders from the Western world can really do? Well, first of all, um, this time she was uh, also saying that uh, the, um, Iranian uh, a Swedish uh, medical researcher who was uh, invited to go to Iran to a medical conference a couple of years ago and then was arrested on bogus charges is now uh, facing the death penalty, facing execution in just a few days. And so she took her arrest uh, to use that global forum to call for freedom and justice for someone else. And that speaks to just exactly who Nazreen is. I remember uh, about maybe a month and a half ago or so, I was talking to Nazreen's husband, Reza, uh, when Nazreen was still in prison. And I had all these convoluted plans about what can we do, you know? And, and, and he said, basically just the most important thing is keeping public pressure on the Iranian uh, regime, that they pay attention to public outrage uh, and uh, they are still, you know, trying to uh, maneuver in the public space. And so pressure can make a big difference. And so if you go to our website, which is www.nazreenfilm.com, you'll see uh, what we can do page. And um, there'll be a petition from Penn America, but there'll also be live links to uh, Amnesty International, uh, to Penn America, uh, to, to um, the Noble Women's Initiative, and other great groups, the American Bar Association's Human Rights Center. Uh, all those links are ways that you can participate. Sign as many petitions as you can, uh, you know, write letters, uh, uh, circulate it to uh, people you know, and just keep the pressure up. And, you know, it may seem like, oh, it's just me and I'm in my room or I'm wherever I am. But honestly, that cumulative effect is that's what got Nazarene out of prison the first time. And it does make a difference. And that's what we are also seeing in the film business with other people who have been arrested with other prominent people that international pressure can really support a case in that sense. So, Yes, we are all going to stand up with uh, signs <laughs> free Nazarene because you're also doing collecting photos of that. Can I, yes, that's true. Can I say one more thing, though, if you don't mind? Please. Which is that, uh, you know, I'm speaking from America and America has a very complicated uh, relationship with Iran. and uh, There are grievances on both sides. Uh, and I think the other thing that we need to do is look at our own history and understand our own mistakes. Uh, and also one of the goals of this film was always to try to break down barriers 
to say that the people of a country are not the same as the regime of the country and to try to um, create ways of understanding and mutual respect. And so the other thing you can do uh, is, is understand your own country's history, understand the history of Iran, uh, try to find ways where we can connect. If you just mentioned your film and what I thought, and you have it in your film description, what I found striking about your film is <clears throat> you couldn't go there to film the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So you found brave people in Iran, I would say brave, yes. who did film instead of you. They're all anonymous to protect their safety. But for you as a filmmaker, how, how was it to film with all these people who are putting basically their life in danger to put yeah. out a story which needs international support to get run? It was very touching. I had done three or four other films about human rights in Iran, uh, including a film about the persecution of the Baha'i faith in Iran. Uh, and so I really couldn't go back there myself. I would have if I could. Um, but I remember one earlier film, I was able to work with some filmmakers and give them shot lists and, and, uh, and really get the shots I wanted. And those people now were too afraid to step forward. They were great people, but they knew the risk was too high. And so that tells you how incredibly brave the people who worked on this film uh, were and are. And both the people behind uh, the scenes uh, holding the camera, but also the people uh, on camera. Uh, you know, when you see Nargis Hosseini, uh, who took off for hijab, uh, or uh, anyone else in the film, they all signed a release. They all supported the idea of doing this, even though by being public, it put them at risk. So, you know, if you think about uh, democracy in your own country uh, and being involved in trying to make your country a better place, you can think of the example of these people who are putting themselves on the line. Um, I just think they're amazing. I can only completely agree with it. I've worked with Iranian filmmakers before and people who made films in Iran and I have the utmost respect for your work but also for your collaborators. Yeah. Um, if you look at the film now, it's it does have a great journey. You do have amazing supporters to say that. Mm -hmm. What would your wish be? What do you hope to achieve through the film? You know, it's funny when we reached out to Nazarene uh, and her husband Reza back in the middle of 2016, we were finishing a previous film at the time. Um, and we said, can we do a film about you? There were a couple of things we shared right away. Um, one was that Nazarene's story would also pay tribute to other women's rights activists and human rights activists in Iran. Uh, that was really important. We wanted a community portrait. Um, like I said before, we also really wanted through Nazarene to connect to the Iranian culture, the Iranian people, and show a side of that country that you don't normally see and that I think you'll respect immensely. Uh, and I think even though we didn't know how it would happen, I think we were lucky enough to get those pieces. Um, another thing is that Nazarene was really inspired in her life and work by the example of people like um, Mahatma Gandhi, Nelson Mandela. When someone like that opens a window inside your heart about what you can do, it stays with you forever. It can, it can change the path of your life. And my real hope among everything else is that Nazarene can do that for people all over the world. You know, I don't think she's just a role model for Iran. I think she's completely a role model for the United States and for every other country too. So I hope that people who see this film will realize, oh, she's someone who I can relate to as a human being. Uh, and then also she's someone who's awesome. And I love what she stands for. And I can do that too. Um, and then I guess the last thing um, among others is that um, we want this film to be a voice for Nazarene, a voice for her freedom, a voice for dropping all charges and harassment against her family. And as she would always want uh, a window to other human rights activists around the world. Um, and so um, that's what we want. Let's get there. <laughs> I think parts of it you already achieved. It is at least for me personally, it's a window. It's a window to a culture that I always admired mm -hmm. and to people where I think we in our 
very comfortable position in Europe and the US could look up to and get inspired by, by what they put online for their belief in human rights and democracy. Yeah. So in that sense, thank you so much for that amazing film, for taking mm -hmm. the time in the midst of this very troublesome day and uh, talking to me. I do have one last question okay. before I say goodbye. We, we touched base on it earlier a little bit, but if you think of something that you would wish from the German audience, what would it be? Like writing, yes, we do have the point of uh, signing petitions and posting with the um, yeah. free Nasrin sign, but is there anything else we can do to support Yeah, you can also write, um, uh, Germany has some amazing politicians who um, you know, believe in civil service and believe in uh, the good things the government can do. And we need to appeal uh, to uh, businesses and political leaders to um, advocate for human rights in Iran, actually in every country, you know, um, uh, on behalf of the Uyghurs, on behalf of women trying to drive in Saudi Arabia. It's a shared thing, but focus right now uh, on Nazarene and others in Iran. Get your leader, get the, the politicians you know to uh, come together to create a statement from your government saying Nazarene must be released now. That will actually give a cloak of protection for her, and it's an, a vital step. And then also, you know, uh, be in communication with us, and uh, we will keep working together for that same goal. We will uh, blend in the name of your website so that everybody knows where to go. Thank you so much for taking the time and. We hope that we can change, uh, that we can achieve change rather soon, sooner than later. Thank you for your wonderful work. Thank you so much. Thanks.